In this section, I am going to discuss graphs of functions. Let us first recall the definition of intercept of a graph. The x-intercept of a graph is the x-coordinate of the point of intersection of the graph with the x-axis. So for example, let's say that the graph of a function is a line and the graph intersects the x-axis at this point, a0. What would be the x-intercept? The x-intercept is the x-coordinate. So the x-intercept here is x equals a. The y-intercept of the graph is the y-coordinate of the point of intersection of the graph with the y-axis. So in this case, you have your point 0b. This is the point where it intersects the y-axis. So what is the y-intercept here? The y-intercept is just the y-coordinate. y is equal to b. Now notice that how do we get the x-intercept of a graph? Since if you are an x-intercept, your y-coordinate is equal to 0, you just set y is equal to 0 and solve for x. If you are the y-intercept of a graph, then that means your corresponding x-coordinate is equal to 0. So therefore, you set x is equal to 0 and solve for y. What we want to do is, given the equation of a function, we want to obtain information about the graph of that function. Let's take a look at this example. We want to find the domain of f, where f of x is equal to x plus 1 over x plus 2. This function f involves a denominator, so therefore, how do we get the domain of a function which involves a denominator? We just remove the values of x which will make the denominator equal to 0. It will be equal to 0 when x is negative 2. Next. Is the point 1, 1 half on the graph of f? When you say that a point is on the graph of f, that means you are asking yourself if the y coordinate here is the image of the x coordinate. So you want to check if f of 1 is equal to 1 half. So let us compute f of 1. f of 1 is 1 plus 1 over 1 plus 2. So that's two-thirds. So therefore, the answer here is no. Because what will be a point on the graph? What we have is the point one, two-thirds, not one, one-half. Next, if x is equal to two, what is f of x? It's just a matter of substituting. We just want f of two, right? So that's two plus one over two plus two. So that's... 3 fourths. What point is on the graph of f? So here, your x is equal to 2, that's the x coordinate, and the y coordinate is the image, which is 3 fourths. Next, what are the x intercepts of f? How do we get the x intercept of f? You set your y to 0. When is a fraction equal to 0? A fraction will be equal to 0 if the numerator is equal to 0. So that means that x is equal to negative 1. That is the only x-intercept of your graph. In our previous slide, we are given the equation of the function and we obtained information about the graph. This time around, we have the opposite. We are given the graph of a function and we want to determine some information about the function based on its graph. Let's start with the first one. We want to find f of 0. What is f of 0? This is the y-coordinate when x is equal to 0. Here on our graph, when x is equal to 0, look at the point. This is the corresponding point. And that is the point 0, 3. So f of 0 is equal to 3 f of negative 6, this is the y coordinate when x is equal to negative 6. Look at the function when x is equal to negative 6. There you go. This is the corresponding point and the y coordinate is negative 3. Next, is f of 3 positive or negative? Again, f of 3 is the y coordinate when x is equal to 3. We have 1, 2, 3. Okay, 
And let's look at the corresponding point. Even if we do not know what this point is, that y coordinate is definitely positive because it appears above the x axis. Next, for what values of x is f of x equal to 0? When f of x is equal to 0, that means your y coordinate is equal to 0. What are those points? When the y coordinate is equal to 0, that means that you will intersect the x axis. And those are just your x intercepts. So the values of x would be this one here is 1, 2, 3. Oh, of course, that's negative 3. This is 6 and 10. This one. For what values of x is f of x greater than 0? When f of x is greater than 0, that means that your graph is above the x-axis. That part of the graph is this one and this one. That's it, the yellow part. What would be the x-coordinates for this yellow part here? That's negative 3 up to 6. Notice that I did not include negative 3 and 6 because we want it to be strictly greater than 0. When x is negative 3, the value of y is 0. Similarly for 6, when x equals 6, y is equal to 0. We do not want that. What else? This one here, this small part here is 10 up to 11. I did not include 10 because the y there is 0, but I will include 11 because when x is equal to 11, your y coordinate is positive. Next, we want to find the domain of f. How do we get the domain of f? We will just get all the corresponding x coordinates. Now, take note that I put my graph inside a box so that I can determine easily the x coordinates look at your graph look at the box what are the values in the x axis that was covered you were able to cover this part up to 11 so that's negative 6 up to 11 i will include both of them because for negative 6 it has a corresponding y value and the same is true for 11 what about the range of f Look at the part in the y-axis that was covered. You will cover this part. And what is that? That is the interval from negative 3 up to 4. What are the x-intercepts? Negative 3, 5, and 10. We were able to solve for it earlier in the previous slide. What are the y-intercepts? The point where it crosses the y-axis is this point, 0, 3, so y is equal to 3. And lastly, for what values of x is f of x equals negative 2. So you just want to find the value of x for which your y-coordinate is equal to negative 2. Where is negative 2? This is negative 2. Where are those points? I will draw a horizontal line here. So that I can see the points in my graph where the y coordinate is equal to negative 2. And those are negative 5 and 8. These are the x coordinates. x equals negative 5 and x is equal to 8. For our last example, let us consider this graph. Let us find the intercepts. For the x intercept, we have x equals negative 2 and 2 because of these points. For the y-intercept, it intersects the y-axis at the point 0, 3. So y is equal to 3. What is the domain? Let me just write d for the domain. Notice that your graph will extend. It will continue indefinitely, right? So that means that when you project it along the x-axis, you will cover the entire x-axis. So that is the set of all reals. What about the range? For the range, if you just project it along the y-axis, that part, this one also, 
And this part also, you will cover the same. But take note that this one here will continue. Correct? So when you project it, what intervals in the y-axis will you cover? You will cover this part here from 0 up to infinity. So therefore, that range is from 0 to infinity. Do we include 0? Yes, because when y equals 0, it has corresponding x-coordinates. The intervals on which it is increasing, decreasing, and constant. It is not constant anywhere. Where is it increasing? When you trace the graph there, you start to increase. But then here, you start decreasing, going down, and then you start increasing again. What would be the interval for this green part? The x-coordinates are from negative 2 to 0. Union, this part here is starting from 2 up to infinity. It is decreasing on the rest of the interval. So that's negative infinity to negative 2 for this part. And for this part, the x-coordinates are 0 to 2.